The authors of books on positive mental attitude make numerous claims about the power of keeping a positive mental attitude and the ability to obtain wealth and success by following the plans and principles of positive mental attitude. Napoleon Hill, W. Clement Stone, Norman Vincent Peale are some of the best known authors of PMA philosophy and all make similar claims about the capacity of their programs and the ability of their programs to succeed, but insist that the readers must follow their rules and suggestions exactly or else the reader will fail. This seems straightforward and logical. Unfortunately, the suggestions and rules are set up to ensure your failure. Add to this the fact that many of the basic tenements of their philosophy are wrong, and I'm sure you'll see that they have a method of creating confusion, frustration, and not a method of creating success and wealth. Think and Grow Rich is one of the best-selling books of all time by Napoleon Hill. And he thought enough of the slogan to use it as the title of his book, Think and Grow Rich. And it's a great title because it gives the impression that all one has to do in order to grow rich is to think about growing rich, as opposed to working hard to grow rich. Mental activity, according to Hill, is the secret to obtaining wealth. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can no more think and grow rich then you can think and grow tomatoes. How do you like that? You can no more think and grow rich than you can think and grow tomatoes. Or think and grow taller. Or think and grow to the moon. The mind is a powerful tool. And great things come from great minds. However, no great thing ever came from thoughts alone. You know, Thomas Edison didn't just wake up one day and think a carbon filament. That's what the bulb needs. That's what the light bulb needs. Everybody learned, or they used to learn, because they don't teach about Edison anymore in schools, that he only got a few hours of sleep every night. And he did over 10,000 experiments to find the element that would actually make the electric light bulb burn for a long time. It wasn't just luck and thinking. He worked his butt off. And by the way, if he wouldn't have, you'd be reading this by candlelight instead of an electric bulb. Thomas Edison was obsessed with creating his inventions. No wealth was ever created by mental activity alone. Actual work and following through on the good idea or the great idea is what it takes to make it a success. You cannot Read yourself into a fortune, as Hill says on his back cover. Only by pursuing your opportunities with an obsessive mental attitude will you work yourself into a fortune. So what exactly is an obsessive mental attitude? In nature, positive charges attract negative charges. Negative charges attract positive charges vice versa. Yet, success motivators continually tell us that positive mental attitude will attract positive mental attitude results in your life. That positive attracts positive and assures your success. How can they possibly state this when it never happens in real life? It never happens in nature. It never happens anywhere that positive attracts positive. Well, actually it does happen in one place. And only one place, that's the inside of an atom. Remember when you learned in high school, for those of you who actually had a class in high school where you learned something, the inside of an atom is made up of protons, the nucleus, that's all positively charged. And yet these don't blow themselves apart. And if they did blow themselves apart, it creates an atomic or nuclear explosion. These protons are held together by a mysterious substance called mesons or nuclear glue. These mesons make the protons obsessed with staying together. If you were to separate 
the protons in the nucleus of an atom, you create in a nuclear explosion. That's how powerful the protons in an atom are with being obsessed. And that's how powerful your mind can be when you use the power of an obsession to achieve your goals. Because only in the atom does it show that you can actually have positive uh, contracted together and refusing to be separated. Nuclear fusion is created when the protons are separated. So it's a very powerful force. It's a force that runs the universe and your body is full of trillions and trillions of atoms. God gave you the power to use an obsession to overcome any obstacle so that you can make it your possession. Your entire body is made up of atoms, including your mind. Positive and negative influence are continually bombarding your mind. But when you become obsessed, none of these seem to matter. You have a purpose. You have a will. You have a drive that nothing will hinder you. Nothing will stop you. Nothing positive, nothing negative can stop you from achieving your goals. As it, an obsession is like giving you mesons holding you together to force you to achieve your goals. Sooner or later you're going to get what you want. You'll become the successful individual that you desire. If that was your desire to become successful. It's important to note that the nucleus of the atom is surrounded by negatively charged electrons. And you know what? This is the same way in your life. You are surrounded by people who are negative by a world who is negative, by a press that only wants to report negative news, that lives to make you feel unhappy, to scare you. But God has made you a positive person. He has kept your brain and your nucleus of your atom together to make you positive, to make you strong with an obsession. Positive motiv motivators insist that you must not let any negative feelings come into your mind or else you'll become negative as well. Now, as, try as hard as you want, you cannot stop negative feelings from coming into your mind because they're attracted by the positive out there. Something is allowing the negative influences in your environments into your positive core. Something is missing. Something is missing that blocks out the negatives. In the atoms, this would be called mesons. In the real world, it's called obsessive mental attitude. That's what's missing in your plan for success. That's what's missing in your desire to achieve your full potential. You're not using an obsessive mental attitude. Too many people believe that if they get a good idea, they deserve to be rich. A great idea is absolutely worthless if it's not followed through with an obsession to see it through. The truth is, an idea is just the first step in a long process of producing, developing, and marketing a product. Ask any great inventor, of which I am a patented inventor. You can think of all the great ideas you want. You can teach, think of hundreds, dozens of them. And you might, it takes hundreds and thousands of steps for people to bring these small ideas into fruition, to make that business into a success. From the simplest idea to a complicated idea like a computer, to a supermarket, to a professional baseball or football team. Having a good idea, have a good idea, let's win the Super Bowl. Well, that doesn't do anything to help you win the Super Bowl. What does is making an entire plan of action that you are obsessed with. Bob might get hurt, we're going to go on. It might be snowing, we're going to go on. We're going to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to win. Obsessive mental attitude. Let me give you an example. I had an idea for a revolutionary new putter that always made the ball go straight. Great! So I made a model and then another model and I tested it and, I, and it was great. People loved it. So I let my friends try it, but a lot of them came up with some negatives about it, so I came up with another idea. I made a new concept and more people liked that. Now all that was left for me to get this great idea and to make me a billion dollars was to find a manufacturer, to raise capital, to find a distributor, to find a retailer, to develop a marketing plan, to get product, to put it into the chain of supply, to begin the advertising budget, to have an office, to arrange distribution, to hire a public relations firm, to get some celebrities to endorse it, 
to figure out how we're going to ship it, to figure out where we're going to work out, to get uh, a few hundred thousand samples, a few thousand samples made, to send it to all the businesses, to send it to all the professional golfers, and then to begin production. And after these simple little things, my thought would make me a billion dollars. But unfortunately, those hundreds of other things didn't happen. And the same thing happens in your life. Hundreds of other people have to be involved with you to make your plan or your thought a success. It just doesn't happen because you thought of it. It's important to remember that mere thoughts are not going to cause any physical activity. And they have no power to cause you to do anything that would actually make those thoughts into a reality. Unless they are driven from the inside unless they're driven and created and caused by your obsession with them. You know, we all have thousands of great ideas and positive thoughts of every day. We all think about how great we could be of power and riches and success and then winning the Super Bowls and jumping over the London Bridge and crazy things, you know. But very few people ever do the hard work necessary to make these thoughts into a reality. They don't do it. You don't do it because you, they were just thoughts and not an obsession. The actual events that happen in your life are caused only because of physical activity surrounding those thoughts, not by the mere thoughts themselves. Thoughts are the beginning of an action, but the action causes, but the actual physical activity is caused by you doing something about it. Movement of people, machines, and machinery in the real world is never created by thought. The movement of real objects in the real world requires physical activity not mental magic. The movement of things using mental magic is called psychokinesis. And that's just a lie. You can't think and grow anything. You have to work and grow it. Nevertheless, it's always suggested as a possible cause of greatness in Think and Grow Rich, where people like Napoleon Hill expounds the power of ESP, extrasensorial perception, and the power of your mind. And that's just a great thing in bold because once again, you didn't succeed because your mind wasn't strong enough, you couldn't stay positive. positive. The mental activity that created the actual work is the only mental activity that will create the actual re wealth, the actual results. If you don't think of something, just using your will or something will not make it actually occur. You've got to use the power of your mind to make you do the work. What's wrong with the PMA lie, whatever you think will come to pass, is that no, whatever you do, whatever you're working on daily, 24 hours a day, 24-7, will come to pass. Not whatever you think. I don't believe that Thomas Edison woke up from a dream and said, carbon in the bulb, and went back to sleep. And that's how he got the light bulb. He had tried 9,999 other things. He worked to make his obsession of reality. That was what he was most famous for. He was obsessed. He didn't even sleep. He slept on his desk. 10,000 experiments before he had that mental thought of a light bulb and before that mental flash of inspiration became a reality. And all the hype of PMA has no value in the real world without someone with an obsession making certain that it gets done. Remember that. All the hype all the positive mental attitude things out there are no value unless someone who is obsessed with doing work actually gets it done. You cannot control your mind to think only positive thoughts. According to those who espouse the great benefits of positive mental attitude, you must only think positive thoughts in order to succeed. They believe that a positive attitude <coughs> will, will attract positive results. And you know what? There's unfortunately negative attitudes out there that are going to be attracted by your positive attitude and it's going to nullify you because the negative is going to overwhelm the positive. And I, and I know I'm telling the truth because think about it. You can't stay positive. Therefore, you cannot allow any negative influences into your life if you want to just succeed by a positive mental attitude and you can't be positive so you're destined to fail. Well, I, I want to challenge you to prove that I'm right. I challenge you to not let one negative thought into your mind for the next five hours. Not one negative thought into your mind for the next five hours. You will find 
you won't be able to do that. No one can. It's like saying, don't think of a pink elephant. Oh, you just thought of a pink elephant. Positive is impossible. You can't remain positive all the time. It's impossible. You can't do it with positive mental slogans. You can't do it with, with affirmations. You can't do it with mantras. You can't do it by reading books. You can't do it. Yet Napoleon Hill, in his great book, Think and Grow Rich, states emphatically, if you let one negative mental thought into your mind, the power of positive mental attitude will stop. Oh, gosh. Isn't that a little frustrating? It must be to the, re to the reader. Try following it along. We'll just catch 22. You know, if you let one negative thought into you, all the great results you wanted will be canceled out. It just won't work. That's a catch 22, you know. When I wrote my first book, I went to a publisher and said, How do you get published? Well, you have to already be an author. You're a published author. How do you become a published author? You already have to write a book that's already published. It's a catch 22. First of all, the premise of the positive mental attitude attracting positive results is wrong. Instead of thinking the words positive and negative, think in terms of good and bad. Think in, in, of, 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 instead of thinking of positive and negative like a good and bad, think of a magnet. A magnet has a positive and a negative end. And as we know, the positive ends of a magnet repel each other. And the negative ends attract each other. Positive ends repel, negative end attracts the positive. A similar set of rules works in your real life when applied to your goals and dreams. Positive attracts negative. Haven't you all seen beautiful women with ugly men? 